So I'm gonna go on record right now and say that knitting a sweater from the top down is the easiest and fastest way to knit a sweater. And usually when I do these intros, I have like at least somewhat of a project established, but I literally have done zero preparation for this. So there's nothing, I've got nothing to turn to. So I'm just gonna dive in and knit a sweater for however long it's gonna take, hopefully just a couple weeks maybe. But I don't like doing intros and you shouldn't like watching them, so we're just gonna get started. Okay, so I did lie a little bit. I do have a little bit of stuff that I've already done, but this is all I have. This is just the, the collar or the neck, I guess, the start of the sweater, because we're doing the top down. And uh, you should already know how to do this. Um, so you should be able to knit in the round on either double pointed needles or circular knitting needles. I like to start on double pointed needles, so that's what I did with this one. And then I just switched to this giant circular knitting needle that I'm gonna use for the rest of, of everything. But other than this, I'm, I'm not really sure where I'm going with this. Um, so I've got this gray yarn that I'm gonna do for, I guess, the beginning. But then I've also got these blues that I'm gonna introduce. I don't know if I'm gonna do stripes or some sort of pattern I haven't quite decided on. Um, to be honest, what I'm trying to do is my book, shameless plug here, my book is coming out in a week. Um, it'll be out by the time this is um, posted probably, because I don't think I can knit a sweater in a week. But basically this sweater is kind of my way of dealing with the pre-publication jitters, I guess you could say. I'm gonna try to make it kind of matchy-matchy with the book. I don't know, I think that's a fun thing to do. So let me give you a breakdown of what I've done so far and then what I'm going to do. And basically, I'm gonna take you along and show you how to knit a sweater. So what I've done is all I've got here is 78 stitches and I'm knitting in the round. So it's 78, I haven't increased or anything yet. Um, I've done the neck, so this is a one by one ribbing and it's very stretchy, so my head will be able to fit through that. So from here, I'm ready to section off my shoulders and the chest, and I'm basically going to just start doing a bunch of increases, and the sweater is gonna spread out from here, and it's going to eventually break into a section for the shoulder, the shoulder, the back, and the chest. So what I have to do now is I have to basically section off these four different sections and a human isn't built like a perfect square so it's not going to be an even division so for me these are the the measurements that kind of work out best for me and of course you can kind of plug and play whatever however many stitches you have on your project so this is 78 stitches for my back and my front i'm going to leave 26 stitches so it's going to be 26 stitches here and then 26 stitches here for the back and that leaves 13 stitches for each shoulder. So we're gonna section those off. I'm gonna use blue uh, stitch markers for the back and I'll use these pink ones for the front. So I need to section off here, 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 and here. So for the two back ones, it's gonna be 26 stitches. So this needs to contain 26 stitches. I'm gonna count from the beginning of my row. So again, this is gonna be the tail end of my yarn. That's gonna mark the beginning of my new row. It's also gonna mark the middle of the back. So from here, I can just count out 26 divided by two is 13. So I'm gonna count out 13 stitches and that's where I know I can add my marker. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 13 stitches right here, and I'm gonna place my blue stitch marker right there. So you just clamp it on there, right onto the circular knitting needle, but not onto the yarn, just onto the cable. And that is the back left corner. So the back left corner of the shoulder. So now we have to section off this shoulder here, and the shoulders are gonna be also 13 stitches. So I'm gonna count out 13 stitches again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And so this is the front now. So we'll put this pink stitch marker on there. And now we have the front section and this is gonna be 26 stitches. So we need to count out 26. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. 
add a stitch there, or a stitch marker there. Put that on. And now we need 13 more stitches marked off for the next shoulder. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Place the marker. And if I've done my math correctly, we should have just 13 more stitches left to the end um, of the round. And then 13 stitches here, which would be 26 stitches for the back side. So let's just double check here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Perfect. So 26, 26, 13, and 13. And now I can just forget about it. Um, I can just start knitting and do my increases every time I hit one of those markers and we'll slowly start to form the beginning of the sweater. So to do your increases, what we're gonna do is we're going to add an increase right before the stitch marker and right after the stitch marker. I like to create a little bit of a buffer zone, so I'm actually going to stop one stitch before the stitch marker, um, do my increase, and then knit one more stitch, and then do my other increase, just so there's a little nice little column where the increases are, are spreading out from, which I'll show you in a minute. Here's our first stitch marker, and I've stopped one stitch before the marker. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do an increase called the make one right stitch. To do the make one right increase, you take your left needle, and we're gonna pick up this little bar that's in between the two stitches. So you see that little, the, the first long bar that you see here in between the stitches? This is what we're gonna pick up with our left needle. So we're gonna pick it up from the back to the front. So take your left needle and pick it up from the back side up through the front side and just pick it up like this. And with it picked up on the left needle, we're gonna knit that off as if it were a new stitch with a right needle. But it's gonna feel really tight and really awkward and if it feels awkward and uncomfortable, that means you're doing it correctly. That's kind of the easiest way to remember it. So you stick that in through the side, up along the back. It's gonna feel kind of tight and uncomfortable. And just knit that stitch off like that. And now my next stitch is just a normal stitch to knit. So I'll knit that like normal, slide my stitch marker over, and now I've got one more stitch that I'm gonna knit like normal. And now we're ready to do our second increase. And the second increase is going to be the make one left. And to make an increase that's moving to the left, you do almost the same thing, but you pick up that bar down below from the front to the back. So previously we did back to front, now we're gonna do front to back. With your left needle, just pick up that bar front to back. And when we knit this one off, we're gonna knit it off from the back side. So instead of putting our needle in through here the front like you would a normal stitch, you're gonna put it in through the back end of that loop and it's gonna feel weird and kind of tight there so you can kind of push it to make it a little looser. Slip it through the back side and you're gonna knit it off like that, okay? So we've just made an increase that's moving to the right and we've made an increase that's moving to the left. And like all things with knitting, you don't actually really see what you've done until you're a couple rows beyond it, unfortunately. So I'm gonna knit right to my next stitch marker and I'll show you this a couple times so you can see and then I'll show you later what it's doing once it's kind of built up a little bit more. So I'm just knitting straight on till the next stitch marker here and we're gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna stop one stitch next to the marker so that's here. And we're gonna do the same series of increases. So we're gonna do make one right. So we go down, we pick it up back to front, and then we knit it off from the front, kind of. Um, but you put it through this front part here and it's gonna be very tight and uncomfortable. Slide it up through the back and knit it off. And then we've got one more stitch to knit. Do that. Slip the stitch marker over knit one stitch, and now we are gonna make one moving to the left, and to do that, you pick it up uh, front to back. See, I always get mixed up, and to be honest, I keep notes. I always have a little cheat sheet here that kinda tells me what to do. 
and I always have to refer to it no matter what project I'm working on. So make one left, we're picking it up front to back. So we put our left needle down, pick it up from the front to the back, pick up that little bar, and then we put our needle through the back side and it's gonna be hard to grip, but slide it up through the back and then just knit it off like so. And then we just keep knitting. So here's how it's looking after going around a couple more times and building it up. So the neck is still kind of nice here, but it is starting to stretch out a little bit more and it's starting to get wider and wider as I do these increases. And if you look closely, you can kind of see what the increases are doing. So at each one of these stitch markers, I've got this little column of two stitches here and then growing outwards from those columns are my make one right stitches. So these stitches are coming out and they're moving from the right. And then these stitches here moving from the left. So that's how you do these increases. And I'm just gonna keep doing this for a long time now. I'm gonna do a round of increases, then do a normal round of just plain knitting and then do another round of increases and then another round of normal knitting. So for the most part, I'm gonna be doing my increases every other round and then I'll come back to you and we'll take it from there. Here's what it looks like now. I've built this up um, a lot more. <laughs> it's been a couple more days since I've, um, since I initially started and here's what it looks like now. So now you can really tell the increases that I've done. You've got these really nice um, branching kind of sections of increases and now you can really tell actually let me put it the right way around here's the top of the sweater and then here's the shoulders and then these are going to be the arms coming out from here this is also kind of like um i have a, another video where i do a tutorial for mittens and this is actually kind of the same strategy you use for knitting the gusset for the thumb um, you're just doing two increases and eventually those increases they, when you grow it out enough, they kind of can fold over and they just create a nice kind of separate section of the work. So now I'm at the point where I'm ready to section off the body from the arms so I can just continue growing the body. And then we're gonna keep these stitches here because I have enough stitches now for the sleeves. We're basically just going to take these stitches off and hold them on reserve. And then when we're finished with the body, we'll come back finish up the sleeves and grow them out. So first I'm gonna knit to this first stitch marker that I have here. And that's where we'll first hold off those stitches for the arm. So I'm gonna knit all the way to that marker first. So I'm going to knit one stitch beyond the marker. So here's the marker. I'm going to slip my marker and then knit just one stitch and now the rest of these stitches from here up until my next marker, these are the stitches for the sleeve. So these are the stitches we want to put on reserve. So I've got some scrap yarn here. You're gonna want a tapestry needle and just some extra yarn. And I've got quite a long length here just cause I'm always paranoid I don't have enough scrap yarn. Um, but you want enough to cover all these stitches here. So um, don't confuse this with the yellow that I've added here for my colors. Um, this is just gonna be scrap yarn for the sleeve. So to take these and put these on scrap yarn, it's extremely simple and it feels strange to do, but basically just slip your uh, stitches all the way to the end of your left needle and we're just going to put them on the scrap yarn with this tapestry needle. So just put a couple off and then pull your scrap yarn through and then just pull more off until we have all of those stitches on reserve. I'm coming up to the next stitch marker. So I'm gonna stop just one stitch before the marker and then we'll be finished with this. So. Yeah, that's the last one. Slip that off and pull the scrap yarn through. Okay, I definitely have way, way more scrap yarn than I needed. So I'm gonna just give that a little bit of a trim and put, set it aside. So now I've got 
all these stitches here on reserve. So for the scrap yarn, you can just let it hang out. You don't need to worry about tying it off or anything as long as it's long enough. These aren't gonna come undone as long as you're not like messing with it too much. And so these are just going to remain like this until we've finished the body of the sweater. So now we've got our two needles here. This is the working yarn on my right, like normal. And then here's the left needle with um, the stitches that we need to continue doing. So what we're gonna do is just bring these together. Now this is where it kind of depends on your size measurements and stuff. So you don't want, the, usually you don't want too much of like a pinch right here in the armpit um, because you've, you've taken off all these stitches and then you're just gonna bring these together. So I like to actually cast on just a couple more stitches just to have kind of a buffer between here and the body. So for this one, I'm just gonna cast on six stitches. So I've got, and to do that, I'm just gonna do my notoriously simple cast on method, which is you're just slipping this on, wrapping it around your finger and slipping it on your needle. So there's two, there's three, there's four, and there's five. So I've casted those ones on, um, and you're just gonna connect the two needles and continue knitting like normal. So it's gonna feel a little weird, and this connection bit is gonna be a little, um, it's gonna feel a little loose at first, but eventually as we go around and around a couple more times, this section will eventually just kind of get more built up and more stable. So this was the first arm. Now I'm going to knit all the way around until we get to the next arm, and we're gonna do the exact same thing. So. Um, I'm gonna knit until I get to that next stitch marker. Um, so now we're coming up on the next arm here. So here's the next, I guess this is the third stitch marker in this round. So I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did before. I'm gonna stop one stitch before the marker here. Um, I forgot, I got this backwards. <laughs> we need to knit the stitch and then slip the stitch marker and then knit one stitch after the stitch marker. So we've done that, and now we're gonna pick up these um, stitches on a different set of scrap yarn. So I've got a new thing of yarn. I'm gonna put this one on my tapestry needle. This one is equally way too long because I'm, st I'm just, I'm paranoid. I'm all, I always think I don't have enough when really I do. So I'm going to slide these stitches off to the left needle and just slip them off with the tapestry needle and slip them onto the scrap yarn. These stitches are just gonna hang out on the scrap yarn, not gonna mess with them. Um, I'm just going to bring the needles together. I'm gonna cast on six stitches additional to my right needle. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Bring it together like so, and we're just gonna continue knitting. So slip the stitch marker over, and then we'll just keep knitting to the end of the round. You can actually, if you want to, you can remove the stitch markers. I probably will eventually. Um, it's just kind of there for reference. Here's the end of the round, and now you can see a little clearer what we've done. So we've just basically reduced the section that we're knitting currently. And then we've got the sleeves just kind of hanging out right here on the scrap yarn. Um, later we'll come back and build these sleeves up. Here's how it's looking after just a couple more rounds, um, three to be exact. Um, it's not looking much different, but it feels like I've been knitting for a long time. But now you can actually see kind of what is going on here with those new stitches, those six that I just cast on here for the armpit. For the most part, I mean, it's just gonna grow out the more I knit. Um, I've actually switched, I've already switched colors to gray and then back to the blue because I'm actually gonna try and replicate this bit right here. And then just, I guess, I guess I'm just gonna repeat this pattern again. But for now, we're just in the desert portion of the project. I'm just gonna be knitting around and around and around forever um, until we, I build up the body to the right length. 
And this takes some time, can take days. Um, and it's really easy to just let the hours slip by because we're knitting in the round, so like it's easy to lose track of where we are. Um, but that's what I'm gonna do. And then I will show you what it looks like from there. I can't remember if I said I was gonna show you how I finish off the body. Um, but I finished it. Honestly, I just did a tiny little decrease here at the bottom here on either side. Um, I just like decreased by like six stitches on one row. So it creates this nice little subtle pinch. And then I'm doing just a, a one by one rib um, along the bottom edge here. The pattern, I don't really know what it's turned into, but I kind of like it. And it is, there is kind of a, an order to it. Um, I've got like just kind of like these alternating stripes and different thickness and um, these little yellow things here. So now we're finished with the body and uh, it's pretty smooth sailing from here on out. The rest of the sweater comes together pretty fast because all we have to do now is just these two arms. So here's the situation with the arms. We've just got these stitches sitting on this scrap yarn. And the first thing we're gonna do is take your circular knitted needle and we're just gonna pick up these stitches that are on the scrap yarn. And then we're gonna pick up some additional stitches here. So I'm just gonna take my needle and slide it through those uh, stitches that I have on the scrap yarn. So just slide it through those loops. And there'll be enough space in these loops for both the needle and the uh, scrap yarn to, to fit. So um, I just slide it on first and then once I've got my needle through the loops, then I'll slide off the scrap yarn. But you can, I guess you can pull out the scrap yarn as you go along or however you want to do it. So now I've got it through all of those stitches. Um, just double check, make sure you haven't accidentally missed one because that would be very tragic. Um, but once they're in there, I'm just going to slide off the scrap yarn. And now all we have to do is we have to pick up some stitches here for the underarm and have the little a little connection basically. So just take your right needle and I'm gonna put it through um, close to the edge, but not too close. I don't like to pick up through the first loop because that's extremely loose right there. So just go a couple loops inwards and just put your needle through. Um, it doesn't have to be like in a perfect spot. Like mine is not, definitely not in the best place possible. Um, and then you have your yarn behind. Um, make sure you have some slack here um, for the tail end. And you basically just reach through with the needle and pull one new loop out through that hole. So moving right along, I have another column of stitches right here. So I'm just going to put my needle through there and go down and pull up the yarn from the back side pull it through that column and I've got a stitch now. And also on the flip side, just make sure that your the yarn that you're picking up is the yarn that's connected to the rest of the ball of yarn and you're not picking up the tail end because you would obviously you'd run out of yarn. So just double check that you're picking up the right strand of yarn. So just go down here is, um, I'll just keep doing this. So here's another column here. I'm gonna go down I don't go down at the very, very top because that's very loose. Um, so I just go down a couple stitches inwards, go down, pull up, and I've got a third stitch now on my needle. So moving on, I've got one right here, go down and pick it up. Go down and pick it up, go down, pick it up. Go down, pick it up. So now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches picked up on my needle. And I've run out of bars, I think. So, I mean, when you're at the corners, this is where it just gets a little wishy-washy, but you just gotta remember that knitting is arts and crafts. It's not anything else. So it's okay to be a little scrappy, especially these parts, especially, I mean, it's, it's the armpit, like nobody's gonna notice this kind of stuff. Um, so I'm gonna it's just kind of go down here and pick up maybe one more stitch, maybe two more just to kind of connect to those two 
get those two parts closer to each other. Um, and then, yeah, I think I'm going to call that good. So when we start knitting this up, um, there will be a little bit of a gap at the armpit, but we can easily use the tapestry needle and just kind of weave those closed. So I'm going to pull my circular needle, needle through for that. And now I've got my working yarn. It's here and I'm just going to start knitting again. So let me just go around and here we go. So I'm going to keep knitting. It's going to be really easy for this first bit because these stitches are just like continued on from these are the stitches that were on the scrap yarn. Um, it's going to be a little bit um, loose and tight, I guess, when we get to the picked up stitches. But as we go along and, and build it up and go around and around more times, then it will just get more solid, I guess. Okay, so here I'm at the gap. Um, it's between these two stitches. It's not really noticeable, but I mean, if you feel like it, I mean, I could actually pick up one extra stitch right here um, to kind of fill in that gap, but I think it's fine. Um, it'll eventually kind of close up as I, as I go around. And then at the very end, I can just close that up and nobody will know. So I'm gonna knit one stitch and then there's the other one. So now it's the start of the stitches that have been picked up and you just knit them like normal. <laughs> There's, I honestly don't even need to show you. You just knit straight on like anything else. They're not too tight. They're actually kind of loose. So I think this is, this is fine. We're not going to have any issues. So there's that first round finished. I'm going to go around uh, maybe just like one more time and then I'm going to start doing my decreases. So I'm actually going to mark out where to do my decreases right now so I don't need to really worry about that later. Um, there's no real method to this. Um, just kind of depends on the type of sweater you like to do. Um, I like to have my decreases on the underside of the arm. So I'm just going to kind of find the midpoint here. I guess <laughs> there is more of a mathematical science you could like take out of the, the stitches and then like divide it by two or whatever. Um, I'm just going to kind of eyeball out where I want the decreases. So I think the midpoint of the underarm is going to be like right here. So I'm going to put my stitch marker right here. And when I do the decreases, we're going to do them pretty much exactly how I've done the increases. I'm going to um, stop one stitch before the stitch marker do a decrease and then on the other side of the stitch marker I'll knit one stitch and then do a decrease but I will show you that in two seconds once I uh, I'm gonna go around I think two more times on this and then I'm gonna start um, I'll show you my first decrease so now I've gone around a couple more times um, I switched colors so that's why the stitches on the needle are gray but I'm gonna be knitting with the dark blue um, that's because I like to make uh, I, I made my life a little more difficult with this pattern I, I have to alternate colors a lot but anyways I'm not showing you color work right now <laughs> um, I'm showing you how to do decreases so I'm at the point where I want to do a decrease we're actually gonna stop three stitches before the stitch marker and to do the decreases, the type of decrease we're going to do is, is basically just going to create kind of a, a V shape. Um, so it's going to pull the fabric together and, and just be kind of nice and uniform. So the first decrease we need to do, it's on the right side of this, and we want the stitches moving to the left to create that first bit. And to create a decrease that moves the stitches to the left, we want to do the SSK decrease. And I may have shown a video on this. I can't remember. Um, if I haven't, somebody else has for sure. Um, so you can kind of watch a more in-depth tutorial on how to do the SSK. But SSK stands for slip slip knit and it's just basically a form of, of decreasing your stitches. You basically just slip the, these two first stitches off and then we knit them together. That's what, it, that's what SSK means. So we're gonna slip the first stitch off just like that as if you were gonna knit it. Slip the next stitch off as if you were gonna knit it and then you knit them together with the left needle. So take your left needle and put it through the front side of those two stitches, pick up those two stitches, come out the front like this, and then just wrap the yarn around and knit those off. And that's your SSK decrease. And then I've got just one more stitch here before the stitch marker. This is kind of just like my little buffer stitch that I like to have, so you can knit that off, slip the stitch marker, and I'm going to just knit one more stitch because that's going to be the little buffer on the other side of the stitch marker. 
And now we're going to do a decrease that makes these stitches move to the right. And that decrease is called just your normal decrease. <laughs> so you just knit two of these. I guess it's the knit two together decrease. So you're going to take these two stitches here, um, put your needle through both of them, come up the back side, and then just knit those off. And that's kind of your standard decrease. And when you're finished, you'll see that the stitches are kind of moving to the right. So now with those two decreases finished, um, I'm just going to keep knitting. Um, I'm going to build this up for about an inch more, then I'll do another decrease, then I'll knit for an inch, do a decrease, um, and just kind of build it up from there. And as you go along, you just want to kind of monitor the shape that the arm is taking. Maybe you need to increase the frequency of your decreases, maybe you need to have a section where there's not that many decreases, just depending on how your your sweater, you want the sweater to look really, it's, it's kind of up to you. Um, so I'm gonna grow out this arm um, a little bit more. I'll kind of show you the progress as I go along, and then I'll show you how I finish off the wrist once I get to it. Here's what it looks like now after growing it out, and I'm almost finished with it now. Um, and this hasn't taken that long. Um, and you can really see now this kind of gradual decrease that's coming along the side. It's a little bit choppy, um, but I'm gonna blame that on the color work that I've done. I'm not the cleanest when it comes to switching colors. Um, so there is just, I mean, it's technically joggless, but there is, uh, my tension is not the best. So there is, it's kind of wobbly in some places, but I don't think that's a fault of the decreases. I think that's more just the color work. So. Normally with your decreases, it might be a little bit of a smoother decrease, but I mean, again, it's like barely noticeable. So I'm gonna finish this off now. I'm still on this giant circular knitting needle, so it's kind of becoming a little bit more of a problem. And I've got this big floppy kind of loop that I have to deal with. So my double pointed needles that I use are these ones. And I'm not actually sure what the size is on them. I know that the circular knitting needle is a 5.5 millimeter. Um, and I know that these are like slightly smaller than the circular knitting needle. So I think they might be five millimeter or maybe 4.5. Going down one needle size can just create a nice kind of tight feel, but it's totally optional, of course. Um, I actually don't even have a smaller size circular knitting needle, so I couldn't do it for the bottom here, um, but I will do it on the wrists. So I'm just gonna switch onto these double pointed needles. Um, just by sliding the work all the way to the end of the circular needle and then just continuing with the knitting here. Um, but I'm actually going to switch straight into my um, knit one, purl one. I can probably get rid of that now. Um, knit one, purl one, knit. Um, I'm doing three things at once right now. <laughs> doing my one by one ribbing. So knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. Um, all the way around. I'm just gonna do that ribbing, the same ribbing that I finished this off with, I'm gonna do that on the wrists here. So now that one is pretty nicely loaded up with stitches. Just gonna set it aside and bring in the next one and just continue with that knit one, purl one. Load that one up and set it aside, bring in the next one. Got that one loaded up and now bring in one more. Rotate everything around and just finish off knitting these last stitches here. So the circular knitting needle is done for now and I'm just gonna finish off the wrist on these um, very noisy double pointed needles. And now with that done, here's what it looks like. Um, I've just done a really basic cast off, so you can do whatever cast off method you like to do. And this arm is finished. You can actually, let's slip my hand through here. The only problem now is I'm actually no way close to being finished because I have a completely other um, arm that I have to do. <laughs> so I have to, I'm just gonna repeat everything that I just did with this sleeve. I'm gonna do it over here just pick up these stitches that were on reserve and then pick up 
um, some stitches here and then just knit the second sleeve. And it shouldn't take me too long, hopefully. This one actually, it took a couple of days, but I, I really haven't been working on this like as nonstop as I usually do. So I'm gonna finish up this second sleeve and then um, hopefully soon <laughs> I'll have it all finished and I'll show you what it looks like. So I don't usually mention dates in my videos um, just because it's the internet and someone could be watching this video months from now. But I did just want to mention that it's the 31st of May and I had wanted to finish this video at least before June, but I think summer caught up with me um, because it's definitely not sweater weather and I'm kind of sweaty in this already. I'm actually sunburned because I was outside yesterday, so it just feels crazy to be wearing this. But I finished, and this is what it looks like. I think it looks great. Um, I mean, it's so cool to make your own sweater because it fits you perfectly, and there's like no need to do any like adjustments or anything like that. I did add this bird to it, um, which I did not show you in this video, but I will do another video later explaining how to do that. It's just using the duplicate stitch and a couple other things, um, but it's very, pretty simple. You just it's kind of like an embroidery technique, I guess, for sweaters. In terms of matching my book, I think I nailed it. But that's it. That's how you knit a sweater from the top down. Um, it's my favorite method of knitting a sweater because you have it all kind of just, it's very self-contained. Like there's no need to do the sleeves, sleeves, and then like bring it all together separately. It's all kind of together. And it, to me, it feels the most crafty, if that makes sense. But hopefully that was helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments below about your own sweater knitting journeys and tips. And then uh, of course, like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And I will see you next time.